Uh, look what arrived here, the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV in this super thin box. So it is uh, time for an unboxing and first look. So let's get started. So like all new Xperia Mark IVs, it comes in a very, very thin box, as you can see here. So nothing very in interesting and exciting in there. Just the specs. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, so not the 8 Plus Gen 1, a triple 12 megapixel setup here, 12 megapixel front facing camera, a 15.5 centimeter, 6.1 inch full screen OLED uh, full HD HDR OLED screen, 5000 milliampere hour battery. We have the Qualcomm Snapdragon HN1, as I said, and IP6568. And uh, yeah, let's open this box up. And there we have the highlight, the phone itself. And that's basically everything because the rest here is just paper stuff. So lots and lots of paper, as you can see here. So there's no plastic in the box, which is pretty interesting. But also, instead of this lot of lots and lots of paper, they could have included at least a cable, USB-C to C cable, uh, that would be handy, or yeah, some kind of charger uh, or headphones even, like they did it in the Mark II series. Anyway, let's get rid of this foil here. No plastic at all. This is also paper some sticky material and here we have the great device in green as you can see here um, this is the mint version i think it's called officially and here we have the sticker as i saw one german reviewer struggling with the sticker for the 10 mark 4 this one is easily to be taken off so no issues there at all so it's not like sticking onto a it like super super crazy and yeah we have the sony logo we have the xperia logo we have this camera which reminds me a lot of this camera of the xperia 5 mark ii as you can see here not much of a difference i would even say maybe the design is the same maybe even the case of the 5 mark ii will fit the 5 mark iii Anyway, we have dual stereo fronts uh, facing speakers. So we have like a speaker grill here and we have this top firing speaker that will also allow us to listen to music and so on. We have the power button with fingerprint reader. We have the shutter button. It doesn't have any texture just like on other phones. Let's look at the 5 Mark II. 5 Mark II is almost flush, so this is like a big difference here. It has not this rounded edges from the 5 Mark II or 5 Mark III, but flat edges just like the 1 Mark IV. And we have, of course, a volume rocker. Very, very sturdy, those buttons. Uh, no issues at all with them. Then at the top, we have a microphone and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the SIM. No, we don't have the SIM slot here because the SIM slot um, in previous versions is, was always here on the side. It is moved to the bottom. So at the bottom we have USB-C 3.1, I think it is, or 3.2. So at least you get fast data connections out of it if you want to transfer data. And here we have the SIM slot. And the SIM slot can take a micro SD card and a nano SIM or two nano SIM cards. Uh, hybrid ones. Here you can see the micro SD and uh, nano SIM card slot. There we go. And here the uh, nano SIM card slot. You can see it's very, very handy that you can pick it up without any issues. It's water, IP6568, water resistant, and dust resistant, even with this uh, little and easy to take out uh, pin. And that's basically everything. Triple 12 megapixel setup. The zoom lens is like, uh, what is it, 3.5 times zoom instead of only two times zoom, just like here. Uh, and yeah, it's a slight downgrade, I would say, from the predecessor that had a variable zoom lens, uh, 70 to 105, I think it was. Um, you could only switch between 70 and 105, the rest was digitally, but still had a greater zoom range natively. But we will check this out, of course, in a review. Otherwise, you can see the design is pretty good. It feels lightweight in comparison to this one with the case on. The 5 Mark II here is almost the same, no difference at all. And now I'm very, very interested if I can take the case off of the 5 Mark II. First of all, you can see how much more rounded this one is and how long it was that I last put it off. And this is the black version. Uh, you can see how round it is. Feels good in the hand here, the 5 Mark II, but 
Uh, five mark three also uh, five mark four also very good in the hand in hand feeling and yeah i think the five mark two is a slightly bit bigger thanks to the rounded edges and this could also mean that the five mark three is a bit bigger so this one is a smaller device now i'm interested does this fit does it fit does it fit does it fit it doesn't fit as you can see here the camera bump is a little bit moved down a bit in a bit to the side so it doesn't fit really here the rest also, I think the, the, the three and a half millimeter headphone jack will not fit. As I think the five mark uh, two and three have the same kind of casing and design. You have to buy a new um, yeah, case uh, here. It fits nicely, as you can see, also used already a little bit. But you have to buy a new case for the five mark four for sure, because, it's, because it will not fit. So yeah, that's the five mark four. Let's turn it on and let's check out the software. If you start your Xperia app for the first time, what I find very interesting is that it has a stock experience for the first wizard, first installation wizard, but it has review additional apps where I can just uncheck some apps that I don't want to have, like to get rid of blo uh, bloatware, like booking.com I don't need, Amazon Prime I want, Amazon Shopping I want, News by Sony I really don't need, PlayStation app, yeah, maybe Image Edge, Mobile I don't need, I have another phone for this, Join I don't need. And from Google, I can even uncheck certain apps. I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. Actually, I almost didn't know Google apps. Maybe the slides, sheets and docs eventually. Google TV and Google Drive, I really don't need. Uncheck those and I don't have them. Very, very good feature. Instead of installing those bloatwares, I don't uh, have to and I can uncheck them in the first installation wizard. And this is now the first boot after the first installation wizard is done. As you can see here, I have certain things here. It is downloading the Music Pro app, I have the Video Pro app, and I also have the Cinema Pro app. It's just hiding here another screen. There is a bit of bloatware. Netflix is always installed. Amazon I chose to install, so it's installing here right now. Tidal free month trial is also installed as well as Facebook and LinkedIn. Some of the users will say it's bloatware, others will say it isn't bloatware. So yeah, in waiting for installation here, but it will not make a big, big difference. Let's go into the settings and check out the uh, storage. So how much is free? So we have roughly 25 gigabytes used here of the 128 gigabytes uh, space that we have. We can free up some space to check uh, this out. Probably there's some files that can be cleaned up. Like for example, here's some files, music files apparently that are installed here that I can delete to clean up a little bit more. But you can see we have roughly 25 gigabytes. That's roughly five gigabytes more of what other phones usually have when they yeah, come shipped. We have this Google search bar and we have of course the clean Google experience. These are the apps that I chose to install. As you can see, a PlayStation app, the Sony headphones app is installing the calculator and so on. I have some updates already available here. Bravia Core, which is the Sony app that allows us to watch some Sony movies for free. Um, yeah, pretty interesting here in HDR, by the way, 4K HDR, even though this screen is only 1080p. Then by default, what we also have is the screen is running at 60 hertz. So what we have to go is to display and then under high refresh rate, we can turn on 120 hertz and then it looks a lot more smooth. And we have in terms of software, probably a software update already. Let's go in here and check out system updates. No update. Uh, is there an update? No update. Interesting. So let's check out the about software here. And we can see we have the Android security updates from July 2022. Now we have September. Not so sure if this is good. Google Play system update. I think we can install one already. Even though, yeah, we can install it already. This will probably also go then to July 2022. And uh, yeah, this is what the software looks like. Software updates are, I think, two years and three years or four years of security updates. I think the last news I heard is that uh, Sony Xperia will go three years for security updates. And um, from my personal experience with uh, the Xperia 1, for example, and also the 5 Mark II that recently got its Android 12 update, I can tell you Sony is doing its work there and I think they're uh, getting better and better also with the newer devices when it comes to providing updates.
So right off the bat, what I want to talk to you about is uh, we have this Google search bar here. We can get rid of it, but first of all, let's tell, talk you, or tell you about the keyboard here and the uh, haptic feedback when I type something in here. It's fantastic. It's the same haptic motor that they use on the Xperia 1 Mark 4. So the upgraded version, which is much more precise and much better to type on, I really, really like this haptic feedback here on the new Xperia devices and on the 5 Mark 4. It makes a lot of sense. Now how to get rid of this bar, because I heard and saw some people saying in the Video, you cannot get rid of it. It's not true. You hold here, you go to home settings and then you can show, um, uh, check, uncheck, show quick search box. And if you do this, it's gone. Okay, okay, the icons are still up here. You have to bring them down manually. This is uh, some kind of Sony box on you for listening. Maybe makes sense to bring them down as well. Not only the, the bottom bar here, but also the icons here eventually. And uh, yeah, otherwise, yeah, this is working fine. And we have Bravia Core as well. Let's, let's put it somewhere here. I removed the icons around, but yeah, that's the one interesting thing. The most interesting thing about this device is probably the battery life because we have a very large 5000 milliampere hour battery crammed into this tiny little body because we have the same kind of battery on the 4K HDR OLED screen 1 Mark IV, which performs very decent with this battery but here we have a full HD 4k uh, full HD 120 Hertz OLED screen that um, yeah it's only 6.1 inch so it is a little bit smaller should use a little bit less battery and has the same battery inside here which would mean fantastic battery life probably. And I will test this out of, of, of course, but you can see here that it shows low battery in about two hours and 20 minutes left. This probably has something to do with all the stuff that's going on in the background and installing stuff. But I will charge it of course, it's now at 50% right now, and will uh, tell you about the battery life in a long-term review. I cannot tell you this right now. But what we want to check out is the cameras uh, for sure. So we have the Photo Pro app here uh, with technology from Sony Alpha. And uh, yeah, we know all the shooting modes and uh, all the other things. And uh, yeah, we can use this. We have this big warning for overheating. I will check this as well. And uh, yeah, this is the camera application. And here you can see we have uh, 2.5 times zoom. I was saying, I think three times, three and a half times zoom. It's 2.5 times zoom here. And uh, we can go five times zoom maximum and seven point, uh, five times zoom the next step and 7.5 times the maximum here. And yeah, we'll take some shots here. Maybe I start off with some selfies and uh, then we take a look at some videos as well. <music> So this is a quick video test with the Xperia 5 Mark IV and I have my external microphone plugged in as well. This is the seamless zoom version enabled. By default it's disabled and it's only using 24 uh, millimeter, 16 or the 60 I think millimeter it is. And uh, the only thing that you can change here is, or what I changed here was going to seamless zoom and then I also switched uh, to 4K 30 frames per second instead of only 1080p. So what I can do here right now with the zoom button is zoom out to the 16 millimeter uh, version here, 4K 30, without any issues as you can see here. And if I want to zoom in, I also have the possibility to zoom in. So let's find something to zoom in, like this sign there, for example. And uh, I can just simply zoom in here maybe directly jump to 60 millimeters here we have 60 millimeters and if i want to i can go even further up to 180 millimeters and it looks pretty stable and i think also very good what do you think and now i'm recording with the front-facing camera the new 12 megapixel camera here 12 megapixel 4k 30 frames per second so it's a bit windy here right now because there's a storm coming but i wanted to quickly check out how this uh, camera is working uh, and uh, I think it is on the same, it's the same sensor as on the One Mark IV, so shouldn't be an issue there at all. Hope you don't mind the wind and wind noises eventually that come with uh, the microphone. But yeah, you can plug in a microphone, which is pretty handy. What do you think about the front-facing camera? In terms of audio, we have the best sound system that we know from Sony. So if I go to audio settings here, we have Dolby Sound enabled. I can enable this here. By default, it's dynamic. I like the music one. 
that is the best because the dynamics sometimes yeah artificially creates a 3d effect that i don't like this is also the reason why i don't have 360 up mix enabled but if you like this you can enable this the same goes for dsee ultimate which, which tries to upscale a compressed highly compressed music we have the intelligent wind filter that i want to turn on for microphones that helps with uh, filtering out the wind noises especially and uh, yeah we have some other settings here let's check out the sound of the front facing uh, speakers first Okay, it has good uh, mid ranges, good highs, not like over steering so much or over punching uh, the colors, uh, the colors, the sound, I mean. And it's also uh, not over driving the speakers. I think there's a bit of lag in bass, and I think the loudness is a bit louder than I was expecting. But I think I heard better from the Zenfone 9 as a small uh, device for sure that has a bit more punch in the bass uh, region, where here it's, I think, a little bit, yeah, bass missing on the 5 Mark IV. Otherwise, it's a very great speaker, especially with the front firing speakers. Uh, very, very nice. So overall, my first impression and experience with the Xperia 5 Mark IV, also the fingerprint reader, which is nice and has this nice animation of the wallpaper, I don't have any issues with it. And I think it's a good device. But the price point is, I think, something that Sony always misses a bit. And also with the 5 Mark IV, I think they are like 200 euros too much. So there's nothing convincing me right now on the first glance that this 5 Mark IV is better than the Zenfone 9 that only costs 800 euros. So if you find something, <laughs> write it to me. Of course, I will uh, compare the 5 Mark IV with the Zenfone 9 in terms of cameras especially and also in performance and other things because we have a different Snapdragon generation running here, not generation, but different version running here. And of course, I will also uh, compare this one here with the 1 Mark IV to see which one has the better cameras. And of course, if it overheats, it's a bit hard now to check out because the summer is like almost gone and we don't have like this over 30 degrees uh, Celsius anymore here. But I will try my best to figure out if this one here has the overheating issue as well or if it is fixed. So if you have some questions regarding the Xperia 5 Mark IV, write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this short little video and until the next time. Bye.